we have ourselves some good stuff, or as they say, rain is the best stuff. But is it? And in this video, I just want to go through with you, check my water quality, pH, TDS, and prepare a bucket with some nutrients. Because despite the fact that everything is somewhat slowed down, some orchids have not slowed down, especially the ones that live outside. They are in active growth. Temperatures and climate right now being their happy place. So I do have a video out about acid rain. This is not acid rain. This is water that has come from torrential deluge downpours over a course of about five to six, seven days to the point that some of my buckets overflowed. Since then, I've already used some of my water that I collected, but I also have a procedure on how to go about it, which I want to share with you today. If you are in a similar situation as I am, who doesn't have a water bucket, so to speak, that collects and has everything covered up. Mine is exposed to the elements, so little bits of debris and <laughs> dog hair, unfortunately, do fly into the water. That's not gonna put me off from using it. What we're going to do is test the pH of what looks clean. Also in some mass of water that clearly doesn't look clean. Looks can be deceiving. And for that reason, I'm just going to take you through what I've been doing in order to make my water suitable for the orchids, especially if I am putting in nutrients or as in the case today, calcium and magnesium. If I was going to use the water plain without anything just to mist or spray the orchids down, I wouldn't be doing this whole fandangle. Seeing as we're dealing with supplements or nutrients, I do this fandangle and maybe it's gonna be helpful. So let's get to work. Seeing as everything is outdoors, temperature is important, of course. So I'm always going to start with the smaller masks because they warm up faster. The larger bodies of water, so to speak, are in black tubs. And I also use black buckets because during the winter I put them in the sun and that will heat my water up when there is sun. If there is no sun the night before, I take my water indoors, let it then warm up to room temperature. So no matter if you're going to be watering orchids indoors or outdoors, make sure that they don't get blasted with cold water. By the time I'm using this water, it'll be about 18, 19 degrees Celsius. First, I wanna check the pH. And if the display doesn't show, then I'm going to put the numbers up on the screen. This can take a little bit to settle down. If this was plain RO water, I wouldn't be checking the pH because I know my pH of the RO system that I've got. But because it's rainwater, this is a tedious little step. I need to know what I'm working with. Now that I've reached lower than 7 pH, oh, my heart is singing. I don't need to continue. We've gotten to about 6.8, 6.7. I don't need to continue because at the end of the day, what I want to do is pH for the supplements so that there's maximum absorption to the orchids. But this is perfect. I'm done. I don't need to know if it's gonna get any less. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't anything above eight. Clearly, it is not. It's a beautiful sight. I'm loving it. All right, next step. We've assessed the pH. Let's check the TDS. Isn't that beautiful? If you can't see, I'll put the number up. I'm seeing 14 parts per million. That's like my RO water. We're going down to 13. No biggie. Nothing has changed. The only difference being that the rainwater in my case is about seven, a little bit less than, and my RO water is eight. Now, pretty much our eyes did not deceive us with this water. It is clear apart from some of the little sediments and debris that flies through the air. So I have a very fine strainer right here in my bucket. And then I'm gonna pour the water in and try to filter out as much of that debris as possible. This little mask doesn't have that much, but you never know. Seeing as I'm using sprayers, I don't want to get them clogged up. And just a little bit of prudence. I could have had another strainer that was even finer than this, but it'll do for what we need. And then I've released a mask and an orchid can go back in its mask. <laughs> Now we can get our supplements and do the whole thing again, but at least we have a baseline. Moving forward, I don't have to do that fandangle again because this mask, the two little ones, the two buckets that I have here with clear water, they pretty much are gonna give me the same reading. So I've done that part of my job. What we're going to test though is the mask over there. You can see that there's something going on in there. And then I have another one that looks even worse. 
it looks crystal clear, but we want to check the pH and the TDS there as well. Just because the water is clear doesn't necessarily mean there aren't particles in there that could somewhat affect the readings of we're going to put supplements in. Also, the one with the tannin, which I will get to last because I don't want to ruin my TDS meter. It is clean. I'm starting with the cleanest water, moving up to the dirtiest water, and then I will clean my TDS meter out just a little bit. Cleaning my TDS meter, what I do is take one part of white vinegar to 10 parts of water, and then I just swirl it around a little bit just to clean the probe. Rinsing it afterwards with clean water again, putting it back, and that's it. This is the calcium and magnesium that I use, not affiliated, it's just the brand that I use. I've used it for years, any other brand will do. I also do separate Epsom salt soaks, depending on what happens during the grow season. Then I measure, I guesstimate, I try to get to around 160 parts per million because then I can divide it nicely. If an orchid doesn't need to have that much in it, then I can at least do a, a nice even, you know, 50-50 split to get to 80 parts per million depending on what orchids I'm talking about and on which orchids I want to address. So we'll give that a little mix. Now, normally, if this was my plain RO water, I would have to put one or two drops of pH down into the water, seeing as I don't know what the CalMag has done to this rainwater, we're going to have to test the pH again. I want my pH to be about 6.5 to 7. That's where I'm aiming for. A few moments later. We are at 7 now. It's taken a long time to get to 7. It was sticking around at 7.1. But I have 7 here now. 6.9. If it drops any further, that's fine. It will never go below 6.5 because of how slowly it's dropping now. This is awesome. I do not need pH down. Happy days. So we'll just test the TDS now. 122. I'll take it. I was hoping for 160, but you know what? I'm not going to add anything. That's fine. This bucket is good to go. Now let's check out what is going on with the buckets that are clearly murky, even though the water is crystal clear. There are sediments and there is stuff in them. Let's see if they show us a different reading. This is the Cymbidium mask that I never actually got around to washing out before the rains came. So the sediment you see at the bottom, that is remainder of what the cymbidium had when it was flushing out. It literally flooded the pot and then I pulled the orchid out I had a nice flush soak. When I pulled the orchid out, I left the water in the mask and then the sediment dropped to the bottom. That's fine. So again, a little bit of a fiddle, but just out of curiosity. Basically, I do not trust what's coming down just because the water is clear. I need to know what I'm up against and every little case scenario is different. I'll be back when I see a steady reading. Just a few moments later and we are at 9. It went up pretty quick and it's now stabled out at 9. 9.1. Every time I turn the camera on, <laughs> it goes and changes. But you see, this is now even higher than what would have come out of my RO system. This is not a problem, to be honest with you, but I'm glad I know it. This is not what I would mist my orchids with. I would take this out, strain it as I showed you in the other example, and then pH down. But let's have a look just out of curiosity, what is the TDS? So it's fluctuating between 174 and 173. You see how important it is to measure your rainwater if you don't have a closed system where it collects into a, a massive tub or something like that. So this would be misting water only. I would not be putting any supplements or nutrients into this water. I can pretty much decipher what I can do with this water. It is only for plain misting and reducing the pH down to 7, 7.5, whatever happens, just so long as it doesn't go below 6. So we've assessed this mask. Let's look at the other one that is pretty brown. I believe there's tannins in there. I'm not entirely sure. But it doesn't matter what is in there. I need to know how many parts per million. What is the pH? Let's go and have a look-see. This is my Corbinara Masai Red Mask. It lives by the hedge. The orchid does and so does the mask because I didn't want the mask to blow and break. 
I didn't want it to get anywhere. I didn't have any space anywhere either. I didn't want it on the floor because I didn't want the dogs to use it as some kind of utensil. None of that. So it stayed on the chair right by the hedge. And you can see how it's like a tea, like an Earl Grey colored tea. Now, if this is tannin, and I'm suspecting that it is, then this is far too strong. We'll check with a TDS meter, but I find from the color, if I was doing a tannin soak for my orchids like tea, I would dilute this down to one part of what's in this mask and two parts of fresher, cleaner water. In my opinion, this concentration of tannin is too high. So if the display is reflecting, I've come down to 7.3 after a while. And I'm gonna take it. 7.3 would be fine. I would still mist my orchids with this. The pH is not the problem here. So let's check the TDS. And this mask was washed and cleaned. It was banking white when I put it out, when it started raining. So you can see how whatever washed off the hedge has accumulated also in this mask strainer and everything will make it usable again. Our TDS is 134, so this water is also great for misting, but I need to mix it up just because my suspicions are there's a lot of tannin in here. Otherwise, based on the parts per million, this is just fine. No nutrients, no supplements would go into this water. So you see different areas, different locations, different influences of whatever rain is collected has an influence on the parts per million and the pH of the water if your containers are exposed. So my advice is, even though it's tedious, just check the rainwater pH of your containers. Pretty obvious that you would check something that looks like this one that we have here. Not so obvious when you see clean water. The clean water wasn't actually only looking clean, it was clean enough for our purposes. Our eyes did not deceive us, but sometimes they can. I don't know if this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. In the meantime, I want to say thank you so much for your time. If you found this interesting, give this video a like. I would appreciate a thumbs up for the video. Thank you very much. The channel would appreciate it as well. And the algorithm may one day find the video and share it around, recommend it further to others. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would like to ask you, what are you waiting for? And if there's any reason you have not subscribed because I'm doing something wrong, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to correct that. Meanwhile, having said all that, have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.